Star Drops. They are amazing. Each Star Drop will increase your maximum energy by 34. And when you have all of them, you will have a maximum energy of 508. That's quite a lot. More than when we first started playing with only 270. So finding them has its benefits. If you love Stardew Valley, you should hit subscribe because I try to release a new Stardew Valley video every single day. There are quite a few star drops to find, so let's get started. The first and the easiest star drop that you can get in Stardew Valley is on floor 100 in the regular mines. This is quite an easy challenge to do. You can easily get to floor 100 in the regular mines within your first ever season if you wanted to, which is a good idea because you start off with such a tiny amount of energy. Naturally, you don't have to rush this and you can get to floor 100 in your own time as well. The next star drop is also very easy to obtain, but you will have to wait until the 13th of fall because you can get this one at the Stardew Valley Fair. This is a little fun festival with quite a few mini games. We can earn star tokens by playing these mini games. You will have to amass a total of 2000 star tokens in order to buy the star drop. But there's an extra easy way to get these tokens. Most of the mini games are fun and enjoyable, but this gambling spinning wheel is rigged. It is rigged in favor of the player. Always bet on green. I think I bet on green like 8 times in a row over here and won every single time. I wasn't lucky. Green just has better odds. Keep spinning on green and before you know it, you'll have 2000 star tokens just ready to be spent. You can then buy the star job here at the ticket exchange stand. You can also buy one of the 8 rare crows here for 800 star tokens if you are interested in completing your rare crow collection. Alrighty, that is 2 out of 7. Now we can get the lost easy to obtain star drop. There are 3 very easy to obtain star drops and the rest will take quite a bit of effort. But this one is also pretty easy. All you need to do is donate at least 60 items to the museum. This isn't that difficult because there are a total of 95 items that you can donate. Just crack open as many geodes as you can and keep hitting those wormholes whenever you see them. Finding the first 60 items for the museum can be done quite quickly. When you have found 60 items, Gunter will give you a key to the sewer. And in the sewer, you will find one of the community's favorite townspeople in the game, Krovis. Krovis has some very fun rotating stock, but it always has one thing up for sale, a star drop, and it only costs 20,000 gold. As soon as you have some extra gold laying around, you should definitely pick up your third star drop. I still never forgot about this star drop and only got it much, much later into the game. This star drop is also quite easy to obtain. All you need to do is visit the traveling merchant every Friday and Sunday and purchase a rare seed. It is called a rare seed, but the traveling merchant seems to have these in stock quite often. Then plant this rare seed in your greenhouse. This is a full only crop and it takes an entire season to grow. So I usually just plant them in my greenhouse because that's just easier. You can also use some deluxe speed grow on it to speed up this process. Once your rare seed is fully grown, you'll have a sweet gem berry. These things sell for a ton, but they take too long to grow so they are not that profitable. Instead, you should take one of these to the secret woods and give it to this bear statue looking thingy. This bear loves sweet things and the sweet gem berry is the sweetest thing he has ever had. He is so happy that it gives you a star drop. Yes, another one. Now there are just three more to go. The next one has a double benefit. You need to get married? Well, you don't need to get married. You can also become very good friends with Grobus and invite him to move in with you. But pretty much all you need to do is get 8 hearts with a romanceable NPC and then give them a bouquet so that you can be in a relationship with them. Then you need to continue giving them gifts until you reach 10 hearts with them. Then buy the mermaid's pendant from this old mariner on the left side of the beach. He will only be here when it is raining and he will only sell you the mermaid's pendant once you have reached 10 hearts with someone. Then give this mermaid pendant to your beloved and then you will get married. And then you will be able to give more gifts and reach up to 14 hearts. But luckily for us, we only need to get it to 12 hearts to get a star drop. This is quite a long process, but it is definitely worth it. 
Alright, so we found 5 star drops so far. That wasn't too difficult, right? Well, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Let's start off with the star drop that you get from completing the entire museum collection. This is pretty tough and it might take you multiple in-game years to complete. But here are some quick tips and tricks. Keep every geode you find and process all of them at Clint the blacksmith. What I like to do is bring a bunch of geodes and completely empty my inventory to Clint. Crack open a bunch of geodes and then immediately hand in any new items that I found to Gunther at the museum. Continue to do this until you have found most of the items. There are two categories, minerals and artifacts. Minerals seem to be much easier to find, so you'll probably find them all before you find all of the artifacts. This is where the Omni Geode comes in. Over 9 in-game years, I managed to stockpile a ton of Omni Geodes, and you can trade them in for treasure troves at the Desert Trader. These treasure troves only drop artifacts, and that is exactly what we need. When you are close to completing the museum, get as many treasure troves as you can and then open them at Clint. Hopefully you get everything you need to complete the museum. This is quite a difficult star drop to obtain and it might take you a while. I mean it took me 9 in-game years. And the last star drop you can get is by, well, fish. Catching at least one of every type of fish in the entire game. Back in the day, this challenge was exceptionally difficult because certain fish could only be caught in certain seasons. Meaning, if you accidentally missed a fish, you'd have to wait an entire year for that season to come by again. But with the addition of the latest 1.5 update, we can now buy magic bait at Kiss Walnut Room. This magic bait is quite magical because it allows you to catch any fish no matter what season it is. It costs 5 key gems and you'll get 20 at a time, so it's quite worth it. Magic bait is so magical that it will allow you to catch night market fish which you can usually only catch during the night market event any time of the year. Just cast your fishing line over here and be patient. Since magic bait lets you catch any fish anytime, this is effectively a huge pool of fish. In this playthrough, I never placed down a single crab pot, so the last few fish I needed were fish from the crab pot. Usually the last fish someone catches is like the lava eel or a legendary fish, but for me, it was a snail. Once you have caught every fish in the game and received the master angler achievement, the very next day, Willy will send you some mail and a star drop will be included in this mail. Nice! And with that, we have all 7 star drops in Stardew Valley. It takes quite a bit of effort to get them all, but it's definitely worth it. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is actually the first time I have ever found every star drop in the game. Have you found all of them? And which star drop is the hardest to get in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.